So I'm going to try a video from a different phone, give some progress of the past week that we've been working on. Um, not sure if the camera angle's right to be able to see what I want you guys to see. Uh, but when we started with the, the tape, the, um, the drip tape, we, we don't have them um, lined up perfectly with all of our rows. So some of, the, some of our plants are getting a little challenged getting water. Imagine if it waters enough. Um, it'll get down where the roots are and it won't matter. Um, but, uh, the broccoli, I mean the Brussels sprouts seem to be really doing well. We have like 60 degree um, nights and 80, 90 degree right now days. And that seems to be working as long as the days don't get too hot for too, minute, too long because um, they're basically a cool weather crop. Um, a lot of the weeds that I took care of last week are already starting to poke through, but they're not nearly as bad as they were before. Before I get to them again, I'm sure they will be. Uh, picking off lady beetles, which destroy... <laughs> the other one landed. Um, which destroy our uh, squash crops. has become a, a nightly thing. Um, Usually around this time of night, five, six o'clock at night is when they like to land. Um, they seem to be pretty busy chewing on, chewing on the leaves, but I haven't really found any eggs or anything in the back, so that's good. I have decided that I need to, my marigolds have been doing fabulous, um, and they're like, in this particular row, really overshadowing the um, pepper plants, bell peppers. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some of these marigolds out and stick them down in the lower garden where we don't have a whole lot. We got tomatoes, potatoes, and some squash down there, um, but not to waste them, but to put them put them down there just so I can thin this out and they're not fighting the nutrients for the, these um, for pepper plants. And I'm, I'm worried that they're going to the stunt the growth of the pepper plants. I only had like three pepper plants last year, which. I mean, we got a few peppers off of them, and the, I have several more this year, and they seem to be thriving. Um, cutting the, the onions back, I had a question on this yesterday. Cutting the onion greens back, um, when you cut the greens back, it focuses the energy, and it gets focused into hopefully creating bigger bulbs down here. And I don't waste the greens, they taste like onions. <laughs> they're perfectly healthy to eat um, and when I do that I notice that then they start getting stronger and thicker and the more e each leaf I guess the way it was explained to me or the way that that I interpreted it is like a layer of the onion so you know how onions have layers it's a layer of the onion which is this is all a learning curve for me um, so like I was talking about with the, the drip tape if the, in a perfect world, this would be right down the middle and would be watering out. So everything that's in this rather wide row um, that we have would be getting watered. Now, not everything is getting watered. So going forward next year, this just goes down in one of those things of things you learn. We're learning stuff every year. Things getting better every year. And for this being our second year garden, it's pretty cool. Uh, got more broccoli coming in. Um, I think broccoli leaves are edible too. I don't know, I've got my hands full right now with the beet greens. I pulled all the beets last night and now i got to process the beets, the greens, and the stems. Uh, radish plant that I let go to seed. So this went to seed because it bolted before I could get it out. You see the size of that radish down there. There's two of them down there. Um, but this is, this is where the radish seeds will be coming from for next year. And you let them go. As soon as those dry out, I can take them off and open them up like a pea pod and, and pull the, uh, sorry, pull the, the seeds out and we'll save them for next year, which saves. So I already, this is where all the carrots were, and I left a couple, a few here, so I can also seed safe from them, like the ones on the end. And I'm trying to, trying to, if I, if they don't bolt too soon, if I can have a plan, it would always to have the ones that bolt and start to go to seed to be on the ends. 
but that's not always going to work out for me. This is where the beats were. It was so crowded. So now I'm expecting the, the onions to be able to take off in size um, with the bulbs, I'm hoping. Um, more broccoli. Wanted to show, when I, this is one of the broccolis that I cut yesterday. It might have been earlier than yesterday, but in the past week anyway. And then what happens is you get these little broccoli spears and the little broccoli florets that, that start growing around there. So tonight I'll be cutting all of those um, and probably throwing them in the fridge till I get enough to either eat as a meal, another random one down there, either eat as a meal or um, process and freeze for a, another time. Um, just finished um, fertilizing my peas. My peas are awful. Um, I think it's because there was so much growth on the other side of that fence that was just like past your knees high with beets and beets, beet greens. Um, I'm going to reseed. I'm starting off with, with fertilizing. I bought some uh, fish fertilizer because um, right now we haven't got the composting working with the chickens working with us on that. If we took just their, we took their poop out of the coop now, it would be too hot and everything, all the, the vegetation would burn. We don't want that. So I'm going to be reseeding. It may be too hot in the season to be doing that now. I'm not sure. I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side. However, I'm going to mow the other side of the fence because that the weeds that are over there are now big enough for snakes to hide in. And that's what I did the last time I planted it. I just took the mower. It's, it's very high. I don't, I don't, it's too high to be reaching in or real close. You know, snakes down here kill you. So we don't want that. I don't want that. Um, the cauliflower doesn't really get enough water at this point. And that's because Rick has, he's, I think he's gonna start doing that tonight. Unless he was out here, I don't know where he went. Probably down with the chickens. Um, we gotta have the drip lines go down each each row. Right now, this is as far as he went. And we so the, the, the greenery is fantastic. Um, there is an insect problem down this way. I can tell. Um, it's kind of lacy. Um, but for the most part, they're doing good. I just think that they need to... They need to be fertilized and they need to be watered every day. And um, bringing the hose down here, I can do that, but there's no really no choice but to water from the top, which is gonna cause more insect problems. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, blueberries, pretty awesome. And some of the smaller new bushes that we put in this year. And some are already turning blue. Um, so that's neat. What else was I gonna show? Um, go down to the lower garden. The lower garden seriously needs some weeding and I'm hoping to get to that uh, the rest of the week. I'm gonna try and button up the, uh, the upper garden just so I don't have to worry about it for a few days and just pick bugs and pick any, anything else that's growing that needs to be picked. But uh, So I got three rows of tomatoes but they're not real distinguishable because there's so much weeds and grass um, watermelon butternut squash um, they're out looking a little dry so I need to be it's it's been it's been challenging because once I got everything in everything got in late and then they didn't get the, the care that they needed was after they went in um, something's been digging in here. I don't know what. I should reseed these beans because they're not flourishing at all. And they were the first beans to go in. I'm going to reseed them. These are the black eyed peas that I grew up that end of the fence last year. And I see a little section here. And they're, they're getting there. I think if I actually watered them daily, they would probably do better. Um, more Brussels sprouts down here. They don't look incredibly strong. They're probably not getting enough water. And this is 
a row of potatoes that Rick put in that is now totally covered in weeds. Um, and the plan is to put another row of potatoes in. We were having problems with a rototiller, but that should be all set now. Bought a new motor for it. So I should be able to do that. And then he might throw some ears of corn in here. I'm not going to do corn on the scale that we did last year, but it would be nice to have a few meals out of it. Get complaints from my kids about it. And <clears throat> this is a new grapevine that we put in this year. And eventually, this will all be more distinguishable, we hope, once we get it all weeded. Um, so, uh, my next endeavor is to start a worm farm. I want to start a worm farm where the worms will provide worm castings and fertilizer <coughs> for the garden. And I also want to do mealworms because that will help us with the chickens. Whereas um, chickens need protein. We can, we can feed them vegetation all day long, but they need protein if we want them, if we want to either fatten them up or get, them, get some meat on their bones so that we can eat them. Or if we want them to lay properly, they need a certain amount of protein like the the feed we've been giving them is like 16% protein. Mealworms have like 56% protein. And mealworms are really easy to grow from what I've been reading. I'll find out if that be the case. Uh, Rick said one of our roosters, I think it's that one right there, uh, which he has named Rocky, because it's a barred rock rooster was crowing this morning so that would be our first crow i think i have food i don't yet i will want to get some eating done uh, have a good night